Ooh, that's spicy. Ooh, that loud, that loud chili is woes. Hi, my name is Deep Tran. I'm the R&D chef of Red Boat Fish Sauce. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make three dishes using kaw. Let's get started. I feel like every Vietnamese household that has a granny that loves them has this in their refrigerator at all times. Like a pork belly kaw like this, this is like deep in the culture. So kaw, you can call pretty much anything because it technically just means braise but this call we're gonna use pork belly dice the pork belly into like quarter inch pieces i use pork belly with skin on if you can't find skin on pork belly that's totally fine here i'm using a clay pot because that's kind of the og way of doing call it's gonna heat this up you're just gonna get the the fat to render off because it's a clay pot i don't heat it up ahead of time you're really not trying to get any color on it you're just trying to get the fat to melt away once i hear this the pot's hot enough, I'm gonna cover it. And I'm also gonna turn the heat low. If you kind of do a high heat, you're gonna toughen up that pork belly. So that's not what we want. And I wanna keep this for about 15 minutes. The tradition of kaw predates refrigeration. So it would just be high in fish sauce. So that was super savory. And then because of that, it preserves that meat. But just like any traditions and food ways, it has morphed. I'm from the north of Vietnam, and northern Kaw is very saltier, where if you go to the richer parts like Saigon, which is a very cosmopolitan city, Kaw got sweeter because after refrigeration, they started to balance out like the, the sugar and the fish sauce. Kaw is also something you do, you do for the holidays, for like Tết, when Tết comes around Lunar New Year, everybody has to have a call. Usually it's called with eggs as part of their Lunar New Year festivities. So after about, 15, 20 minutes. The pork is cooked through, but it's not tender, which will happen later. Remove the pork and leave the drippings. I actually soak this pork belly overnight in water. It just draws out the impurities, so then you can have a, a better call in the end. Like if you wanna impress your in-laws, you know, you, this is what you do, keep them quiet. You're going to add the aromatics, shallots and garlic. Raise the heat high for a little bit. So when you start hearing that sound, make sure you reduce the heat down. You kind of want to gently coax the aromatics out and bring out its sweetness. You want the, the sweetness to be really complex, so not just from the palm sugar or the sugar that you use. After that, what you're gonna do is you're going to add dried shrimp. This is preserved just like by salting. You need to kind of like dispel some of that salt right away. Soak this in hot water for about like 10 minutes. And by that time, it'll be easy for you to pound in a mortar and pesto. Or you can just like chop it up with like a knife. You don't want to soak it for longer than 10 minutes because not only will you be leaching the salt, you'll be actually leaching the briny sweetness, oceanic sweetness of the shrimp. You're also going to add fish sauce, palm sugar, deglaze it a little bit with water. Add the pork back. I'm just trying to get the pork belly to coat in the caw. Now that it's kind of all incorporated, I'm going to add a little bit of water and I'm now going to turn it up high. I'm going to listen for the rumble. You would get that Shakespearean bubble bubble. Put a lid on it, get it to low, kind of the lowest you can. So you're gonna cook this until it reduces. It's gonna have a really wonderful color. We're gonna check in about, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. That is looking pretty good. The shallots have all just kind of collapsed. And you can serve it with some rice. And call also goes really wonderfully with blanched vegetables, like blanched cabbage with some ginger. It's kind of like a cool, neutral side dish and it kind of helps tamper the deep savoriness of this call. I mean, I just can't think of anything more ideal. Mmm. It kind of doesn't get much better than this, guys. I've eaten a lot of this at midnight after coming home from the restaurant. This is like a, a cook's meal, for real, you know? Like, it's not fussy, but it's just like super flavorful. Vietnamese dishes from the central region should get more shine for sure. Like, I love bun sale and I want bun sale not to be known as a crepe. Like, it didn't come from the French. <laughs> I think bun sale is more like a dosa. I'm not the first person to say that too. Another thing I think should be more known would be like salted lime drinks or salted citrus drinks, which is like, you know, soda chan. It could be salted like calamansi. It could also be salted apricots. There's these wild apricots that grow in Vietnam. So if you've never had like a carbonated salted citrus drink, you haven't lived <laughs> because it's, it's mighty fine. 
So now that you've made your kong, what you, you can do is make gum nam, which translates to pressed rice. Kind of think of like polenta, you know? This is what we used to do when we'd go on road trips. Like my grandma would make like a log of gum nam. When we were hungry, she'd take out some to call and then she'd cut a little slice of the gum nam for us. First things first, you gotta get your call. She's gonna actually mince it. You wanna get a little bit of the fat in here. You don't want it too dry. You're gonna cook rice a little mushier than you would rice you're gonna eat out of a bowl. You can like now form it. And what you're trying to do is mash it pretty much so that the individual grains aren't discernible anymore. And my grandma used to do this and I just remember it being really labor intensive. Definitely something you do out of love. Most of the stuff that we ate as snacks were like, you know, from grandma. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to kind of form it into somewhat of a cylindrical shape. You're going to put it here onto, this is just plastic wrap. Form it into a roll, kind of like making cookie dough or compound butter. You kind of want to do like a, maybe like a one, one and a half inch diameter. So I find it unwieldy, anything bigger. It's really important that first initial roll right here. Once, if that's like super tight, then the rest will just follow. Twist the ends. And you're just gonna let it set for like an hour or so. You can put it in the fridge. If done right, it still will be pliable in the fridge for like a day or two. You can see a little bit of a, some grains, but it's mostly all become one dough. My grandma would just have a spool of thread for sewing. And whenever we were hungry, she would just cut us a piece like this, and there you have it. But if you have a friend who's very handy with woodworking, you can create your own gum nam cutter. When I still had GGD, we just went through so many orders of this. I was like, I just can't be cutting this individually by hand. So this is what we came up with my cooks. They were just like, every time we had like a rice cake order, they were like, ah, oh, God damn it. This definitely squelched all the complaints afterwards. So you're gonna take the mince call, you're gonna just top it. Even though this was like our road food, you can definitely do this as an appetizer. Damn good snack, I think. What really goes great with kaw is a pickle. Here's some purple shallots that I made. So there you go. There's your gum nam with minced kaw and a pickled shallot. This is definitely a childhood memory, you know like road trips or just coming home and just you know seeing grandma like just make these rice cakes and knowing that it's gonna we're gonna eat it i remember reading about this true first press artisanal fish sauce that was now available in the united states and i was like what once i tried red Bull, i just thought i can't go back and so i just like emailed the email that was on the website, I don't even know, I mean, I knew the founder's name was Gung, and I said, hey Gung, um, you don't know me, but I'm like desperate, and <laughs> I like need your first thoughts. And he's like, you yeah, know, actually, I'm gonna come to Southern California, I'll deliver it for you. And so we kind of started that friendship. He was like invited, like, you, you if you've never been to Vietnam, since you left, you should come again and you should come visit the barrel house. And I go, I'm like busy. And then I closed my restaurant and he emailed me. He goes, hey, now that you don't have a restaurant, I think there's no excuse for you not to come. And so I kind of just created the job at Red Bull. I said, hey, I think you need a, an R&D chef. And I think I know somebody. And I met my girlfriend at a Red Bull event. Everything comes out Red Bull. I have another snack and appetizer to show you jazza, which is egg rolls. Get a cup of the minced kaw, and you're gonna add minced taro, green onions, and this is gonna be your filling. And you're not gonna need to add any salt or anything because it's already in the kaw. Just to mix it so it's incorporated, you're gonna need a binder to seal your rolls. I like these smaller wrappers. I think the smaller ones fry up a little better. It makes it a quick fry and that helps it make it an even fry. This is as much as you'd want. Don't overfill it. And the more even you can make your wrapper, no areas that are bunched up, the better that fry will be. I kind of like these little meditative tasks. Like my girlfriend always knows when I'm stressed because I'm just like rolling some something or other. When you're done with the wrapper, just kind of set it down, seam side down, just to kind of help it bind. Now that we have three, I'm gonna start frying these. It doesn't have to be too, too deep. And you kind of know when 
you're done. Just when it, the oil stops agitating too much, that means like the water's cooked out. Some people really like an egg roll that has a lot of like bub bubbles in it, like a cannoli. So you just higher heat, but the higher the heat, uh, the more likely you'll burn. So just do high heat and then lower it down. I like to go a lower heat so that way the rolls could get more time without burning. And that means that the fry will have penetrated all the layers. So we're getting kind of near the danger zone because you want it to brown, but you don't want it to become char. I don't have a, a rack that fits this plate, but normally I'd, I'd use a rack. You can kind of time it a little bit where you make like maybe four or five and then let it fry while you're doing the rest. Also, you'll, you'll realize that, you know, they, these get darker because I'll keep on cooking just a little bit after you take them out. So now that you've made your kaw egg rolls, you're gonna need something to dip it in. And so we're gonna make a ginger nook jam. Kind of translate to like, dipping sauce but it just it really does, just doesn't do, do it justice because we're in california and we're spoiled i'm going to make a calamansi nick jam it's a citrus super tart i really like the aromatics of the calamansi to garlic cloves i'm just going to smash it and we're also going to put some ginger in there because pork and ginger go really well together wherever the grain of the the ginger is you want to cut across the grain the fibers and that's going to prevent you from having a stringy nick jam this is a Lao pepper, which is like super, super spicy. This is crazy, but it's delicious. So we're gonna put it in here. Smash it to, it becomes like almost a paste. I mean, I'm not a purist about like farmer's market produce, but this is when like the better your garlic, the more oils it will have. It just gives you more flavor. The, the chilies again, the more oils it will have, it'll give you more flavor. Now you're gonna add palm sugar, and then you're gonna add your acid. I'm trying to get those oils. The acid is the lowest uh, component in this sauce. So if you like put too much acid, you'll end up having to add more fish sauce, more sugar. Every Vietnamese person has had that experience of like, you just want to make a bowl and then you end up making like a tub of it because you just have to, you're just trying to correct the ratio. And then you're going to add fish sauce and water. Ooh, ooh, that's spicy. Ooh, that lao. That lao chili is woes. With this jazzo, it's kind of like I'm marrying two Lunar New Year things together, which is kaw and egg rolls. Mmm. And it's cooked all the way through. It tastes like a holiday to me. Yeah, this is a winner. Thanks for following along and cooking with me. Tell me what your favorite foods are. Comment below. Please like and subscribe to Food & Wine's YouTube channel. Thanks for watching Chefs at Home.